Um, so to summarize a little bit more, the big obstacle to SN2 was steric hindrance that blocks the nucleophile. And now, uh, in, the last, in this session, the last one, I think we've seen three possible sources of steric hindrance that can block the nucleophile. So can you guys think of any, what, what's one possible source of steric hindrance that can block a nucleophile? Uh, being a, a third degree uh, a tertiary carbon. Yeah, so if the substrate has a lot of substitution. So for example, there can be steric hindrance from the substrate. Remember the substrate is just the molecule with the leaving group. Um, in fact, if you have too much steric hindrance, you can't do SN2. This is too much steric hindrance to do SN2. So you could have steric hindrance from the substrate. What's another possible source of steric hindrance? Having a bulky base. Yeah, you could also have steric hindrance from the nucleophile, basically. Here's that tert butyl oxide we were talking about last time. Now, a naive person might think that this is a good nucleophile, because it's got a nice negative charge over here. But this has too much steric hindrance to be a good nucleophile. Too much steric hindrance to be a good nucleophile, so instead it's going to have to act like a base. So one place that the steric hindrance can come from is the substrate primary, secondary, or tertiary. But the steric hindrance could come from the nucleophile itself if it's too bulky. And I put this in quotation marks because this is so bulky, it actually can't be a nucleophile. Um, and what's the third place, the last place the steric hindrance can come from? Well, it's what we just talked about, the solvent. So the solvent can also provide steric hindrance. And that's what we were just talking about here. So um, I was uh, promising you last time that if we just memorize that the big obstacle to SN2 is steric hindrance that blocks the nucleophile, that explains almost everything about SN2. And this is a really good example. It explains why aprotic solvents are better, because they provide less steric hindrance. It, it explains why less bulky nucleophiles are better, because they provide less steric hindrance. And it explains why less bulky substrates are better, because they provide less steric hindrance. Uh, then the big obstacle to SN1 was stabilizing the carbocation. Um, and I think we've seen two things that can stabilize the carbocation. So what are the two things we've seen that can stabilize a carbocation? Uh, alkyl groups? Yeah. The most important thing that can stabilize it is putting in as many alkyl groups as possible. So this is a very happy carbocation. Um, so you could have stabilization from the substrate itself, basically the substrate can stabilize itself by being substituted. This is by far the most important thing that can, uh, that can help it. And the other thing that can stabilize the carbocation is the solvent, as we were just seeing here. So there's two things that can stabilize the carbocation. Um, so again, I was promising that if you memorize that the big obstacle to SN1 is steric hindrance that blocks the nucleophile, I just misspoke. If you memorize that the big obstacle to SN1 is stabilizing the carbocation, that will explain almost all the patterns for SN1. Well, it explains why tertiary is best, because there's the most um, electron donating alkyl groups here, and it explains why protic solvents are best. By the way, why does this stabilize this carbocation? We, we saw last time it's because carbon chains are electron donating. We've got to have memorized that carbon chains are electron donating, otherwise we don't see why this stabilizes this here. Okay, so it's important to see how solvents just tie into the whole general pattern of everything else that we've seen uh, here. Okay, so to answer your question, what impact do the solvents have? Well, they didn't really affect whether this would be SN1 or SN2. You won't really see that effect probably on test problems. But they might ask you whether it would be faster or slower with different solvents and ask you to explain why. And now we've kind of gone through the reasoning uh, for that. By the way, all of that is summarized on the first page of the handout. If you look at the first page of the handout, it uh, summarizes which solvents are better, which substrates are better, which types of nucleophiles are best. So.